Pairs law states that the enthalpy change of a reaction is determined by the initial and final states of the system and is independent of the pathways taken. Which basically is saying, I don't care how you do it, but I just want to see that you can get from point A to point B. The reason why we need to learn Hess law is so that we can find the enthalpy change of a reaction. There are two methods to do this, namely through the use of energy cycles and energy level diagrams. But for this video, I just want to focus on how to construct energy cycles and I will illustrate it using two worked examples so do make sure that you watch the entire video to the very end. Constructing an energy cycle is like piecing a puzzle together. At first, you will feel very overwhelmed, but you don't just freeze over there, right? You try and fit each puzzle piece onto the board one by one. The same thing goes for constructing the energy cycle. If you feel overwhelmed and don't know where to start, just start small and start piecing the puzzle together. Eventually, everything will fall into place. Let's take a look at this example. Feel free to pause the video to read the question. To find the enthalpy change of this reaction, we must first write out the equations representing these enthalpy changes which are given in the question. These equations will be our individual puzzle pieces which we will then use to fit into the energy cycle to complete the puzzle. I won't be going into the details into how to construct these equations in this video because I want to purely focus on how to construct the energy cycle. Now that we have our three puzzle pieces, let's try to fit them into the energy cycle. You can choose any one of them to start with, so I'm going to go with the third equation first. Firstly, we need to identify the substance that is in the third equation, which is in this case, is ethanol. What we do now is we basically fit the third equation into the energy cycle. The equation states that one mole of ethanol reacts with three moles of oxygen to form two moles of carbon dioxide and three moles of water. So by right, we should draw an arrow down and basically copy down the product's form and label the enthalpy change to represent the reaction. But notice that the 3 moles of oxygen is not there in our main equation. So what we can do is add 3 moles of oxygen to both sides of the equation. The reason why we add to both sides of the equation is because we must be fair and we cannot just add to the right hand side and leave out the left hand side or else the equation will not be balanced. After adding the 3 moles of oxygen to both sides of the equation, we can simplify it to look like this. So now, we have successfully pieced the third equation into the energy cycle. Let's now go on to fit the remaining two equations. Again, you can choose any one of them, it doesn't really matter. So let's say I want to choose the first equation. Then, we need to identify the substance of interest, which is carbon in this case. The equation states that one mole of carbon reacts with one mole of oxygen to form one mole of carbon dioxide. But if you were to look at the main equation, there are two moles of carbon. So what we need to do is we need to multiply 2 to each term in our first equation here so that the numbers tally. And don't forget, our enthalpy change will also be doubled. Then, now we can fit the first equation into the energy cycle. So 2 moles of carbon reacts with 2 moles of oxygen and the 2 moles is part of the 3.5 moles of oxygen in the main equation. Then we can draw an arrow down to this intermediary and label the enthalpy change, not forgetting to multiply it by 2. So here comes a common question by students. Itcher, I thought you're supposed to add on two moles of carbon dioxide to this existing line of intermediate substances? How come you didn't add on? Well, this is the part where 98% of students get super confused and the main reason why they are not able to construct the energy cycle. Now I want you to imagine this intermediate line of substances as a basket of substances, like a basket with apples and bananas. So if there are already enough substances, we actually do not add on more to this basket of goods. For example, when we wanted to fit this first equation into the energy cycle, it's supposed to produce two moles of carbon dioxide, right? But since the basket of substances already has two moles of carbon dioxide, it's as if you can take out the two moles of carbon dioxide out of the basket to satisfy the equation so that the numbers tally and then replace it back into the basket after that. So if there's already a substance of interest inside the basket, you don't need to add on any more, just reuse whatever is already inside the basket. Still don't really get it? Don't worry, let me show you by fitting the final equation into the energy cycle. Since the main equation has 3 moles of hydrogen gas, this means that we need to multiply the second equation here by 3 so that we can fit it into the energy cycle. So it will now look like this, and don't forget to multiply the enthalpy change by 3 also. 
So now, very nicely, 3 moles of hydrogen reacts with 1.5 moles of oxygen and we can draw an arrow down and label the enthalpy change. From here, we do not need to add in another 3 moles of water because the basket of substances already has 3 moles of water, which can be used to satisfy the equation and tally the numbers correctly. So with that, we have successfully constructed the energy cycle and now what's left to do is answer the question by finding the enthalpy change of the main reaction. To do that, we must first write by Hess law, the enthalpy change equals to negative 393 times 2 plus negative 286 times 3. And because the energy cycle is flowing in this anti-clockwise direction, but the arrow here is opposing this flow or motion, we will need to reverse the sign by multiplying it with a negative so that it will become a positive 1368 value. So we will add on positive 1368 which will give you negative 276 kilojoules per mole. Let's take a look at one more example. Again, feel free to pause the video to digest the question. So what we need to do first is to write out all the relevant equations. Then we just pick and choose any equation to fit into the energy cycle. I feel like going with the first equation this time, so let's fit the first equation into the energy cycle and this is how it will look like. Keep in mind that we already have 3 moles of carbon and 4 moles of hydrogen added into our basket. Next, let's use the second equation. The substance of interest here is water. And since the main equation has 4 moles of water, we need to multiply 4 to every substance in the second equation, not forgetting to multiply the enthalpy change by 4 too. So 4 moles of hydrogen gas reacts with 2 moles of oxygen to form 4 moles of water. So by right, we should draw an arrow up to represent the equation. But take a look at the basket now. The basket already has 4 moles of hydrogen gas. Hence, we can use it to satisfy the second equation and there is no need to add on any more hydrogen. But the basket does not have any oxygen. So in order to satisfy and balance the equation so that it can fit into the energy cycle, we can then add 2 moles of oxygen into the basket like this. And lastly, write in the enthalpy change. And finally, we've come to the final piece of the puzzle. Since the substance of interest here is 3 moles of carbon dioxide in the main equation, we need to multiply 3 to everything in the third equation. Then, we draw an arrow up from the basket to the 3 moles of carbon dioxide and label the enthalpy change. Since 3 moles of carbon dioxide is formed from 3 moles of oxygen, and the basket only has 2 moles of oxygen, we just need to add one more mole of oxygen so that we can fit the equation into the energy cycle. Lastly, notice that there are 5 moles of oxygen in the main equation that is left untouched. We need to also account for these 5 moles of oxygen too. And since the enthalpy change of formation of oxygen is zero, because oxygen is already an element by itself, we need to add in 2 more moles of oxygen to the 3 moles of oxygen in the basket so that it will tally with the 5 moles of oxygen in the main equation. Then, to finally answer the question, we write by Hess law, and because this arrow towards the C3H8 is opposing the anti-clockwise flow, we need to reverse the sign of negative 144.1 by multiplying it with a negative, and hence, the enthalpy change will be equals to negative 2220 kilojoules per mole.